Hi, this is Gabe Newell, and welcome to The Lost Coast. In this tour, we're going to be talking about a new graphics technology we've been developing called High Dynamic Range, or HDR. We'll also be giving you some insight into the design and production challenges we faced during the construction of The Lost Coast. First, a quick explanation of the commentary system. To listen to a commentary node, put your crosshair over the floating commentary symbol and press your use key. To stop the commentary, put your crosshair over the rotating node and press your use key again. Some commentary nodes may take control of the game for the purpose of showing something to you. In these cases, simply pressing your use key will stop the commentary. The remains of the ship in front of you were once part of a puzzle we cut out of the Lost Coast. The original design of the puzzle was based on the idea Water presents us with a lot of rendering challenges. In fact, we have to... Hey! You there? Wait a minute now, aren't you? Oh, you are. You're that scientist chap, a freedman, fishman. Am I right? You must be here to take on the Combine. Not sure what one man can do, but no other reason to visit St. Olga at a time like this. I'll take you to where they made their base. Or the process of building characters in Half-Life 2. Here, now, let me just unlock this gate for you. I've got the key right right here. There we go. Get along now, laddie. Destroy that gun and no dawdling.
The area you're currently entering is called the Cliffside Arena. We were particularly happy with the vertical cliffside in Half-Life 1 and regretted that we didn't iterate further on that concept in Half-Life 2. Vertical space allows us to force the player to deal with threats from above and below. We find that players focus their view on the direction they're travelling, so by using a cliffside and having the player ascend it, we ensure that the player will look up and be prepared for enemies. If the player's path was to move past the bottom of the cliffside, it would be unlikely he would notice soldiers rappelling down from above, and dying from unknown threats never feels fair and certainly isn't fun. One of the features of our HDR solution is dynamic tone mapping. The easiest way to think about dynamic tone mapping is that it's a method of simulating the way the human eye reacts to light. In the real world, you've probably walked into a dark room and noticed your eye adjusting to the darkness, letting you see better after some time. Or you've walked out into a bright day and been blinded by the sun, only to have your eye adjust and allow you to see normally. Your iris is adjusting itself in response to the amount of light hitting your eye. Dynamic tone mapping simulates this by automatically adjusting the exposure of the scene to mimic the behavior. The courtyard in front of you is a space we call an arena. Arenas are built to hold the player from The source engine supports a wide variety of We wanted to transition from a bright, wide open space in churches are great dramatic. Our games are filled with Our games are filled with things we call gates, which are essentially just challenges that the player must overcome to drive the experience forward. We used a puzzle here since the player has been through combat and exploration recently. When we design challenges, we try to ensure that the player's goal and the action required by the player are both fun. It's not hard to create interesting goals for the player, like stop. Our games are filled with things we call gates, which are essentially just challenges that the player must overcome to drive the experience forward. 
we used a puzzle here since the player has been through combat and exploration recently. When we design challenges, we try to ensure that the player's goal and the action required by the player are both fun. It's not hard to create interesting goals for the player, like stopping this machine from shelling the nearby village, but the action required by the player to solve the challenge needs to be fun as well. So instead of something menial, such as hitting an off switch, the player gets to use physics to jam the gun's mechanism and cause it to break. This marks the end of the Lost Coast tour. This has been an experiment on our part to see if our community would find it interesting to learn more about our development process. As always, we're interested in your feedback. I can be reached at gaben, G-A-B-E-N, at valvesoftware.com. If people like this, we'll keep producing this kind of content for all of our games going forward. Thanks for listening. did it, lad. Come on with me to St. Olga. We'll celebrate this victory with a feast. I, uh, hope you like leeches. Hey, where you going? You're getting fuzzy around the edges. Well, I guess you got other places to be. Uh, nice knowing ya. Yeah?